you could actually descend upon the ascension path in real estate and be extremely successful versus, you know, ascending with fixing and flipping and kind of working yourself up the ladder. And that's been my like extraordinary experience, you know, and I eventually created the formula. Hello, everybody. It's Jake Stenzian, host of the Wheelbarrow Profits Podcast. Here with my co-host, the multifamily mentor, the coach, chef, the father, six, best sign off there, the G Daddy. Gina Barber, Gina, how's it going? Mr. Stenziano, you know why I'm doing good today? I am doing good because I'm in Florida and it's not, uh -oh. there's uh -oh. no Here snow, <laughs> no 18 inches of snow, no six degrees. It's a little chilly. It's 45 degrees outside this morning, but I escaped. How you oh, doing? Man. Economic refugee. Hey, we got the, the White Plains <laughs> connection going on today. So I'm doing really good, always making it happen. Today's guest is an author, educator, engineer, and one of Manhattan's most successful real estate experts. Since starting his career over a quarter century ago, Ken Van Lu has gone from flipping and renovating homes to being an internationally respected source on all things real estate. So without further ado, the man from 18 inches of snow north of the wall. <laughs> Yes. Ken, how are you and doing today? White, and a White Plains connection. <laughs> I know, I know. So, Ken, how's it going? It's going great. You know, other than uh, I'm dealing with the snowblower, <laughs> you know, yesterday. <laughs> so, something I normally don't do, but I was like, if I want to get my car out, you know, I've got to get up today. <laughs> but, you got uh, to start that engine, man. So, let's, uh, let, let's take it back. Um, you know, tell us how you got started in real estate and I'd uh, love to learn about your journey. Yeah, you know, it was, uh, it's, been, it's been phenomenal. You know, it, it ended up with 1,500 units in New York City, skyscrapers, 3 million square feet. And it all started with, uh, with a dream. You know, I, um, it, it, it said in that bio that I had actually started with fixing and flipping. And it's funny because I actually did it in reverse. Where I started and was, you know, I became a civil engineer. I created the six-year plan in college. And, uh, you know, I wasn't really a smart student. And, uh, you know, I had a construction job, you know, at 17, building this major dam rehabilitation, pretty phenomenal, you know, to do that type of heavy construction. And at 20, I guess it was 22 out of college, I had won a, a design award in, in site development. And when I won that award, I said, wow, you know, it'd be pretty cool if I could develop projects. So came out of school, started doing civil engineering, hated sitting at a desk, you know, just hated sitting at a desk. And the left rack organization offered me a, pro a job as a project super to build two 33 story buildings on the waterfront in Newport. As you go through the Holland Tunnel, you can actually see those two towers. And from there, I never really looked back. You know, I went into doing uh, major commercial buildings in Northern New Jersey. And then that led me to New York City to build a, a billion dollar project in Brooklyn called Metro Tech. That led to other high rise in New York City. I developed 240 Park Avenue on 19th and Park in 2008. And then we had the Lehman Brothers crash. So it got interesting. But, um, you know, I recovered that in 2013, 14 it was. I opened up a concrete company, did another 300 units. We cracked the code of non-union in New York City. And, you know, here we are today doing major developments in New York City and, and launching, you know, the Modern Wealth Building Formula worldwide. And it's real exciting. Ken, take us back to the first deal you did, your first deal, your first investment with your own capital. How did that look? Oh, okay. Great question. So here, it's funny. So my uh, my mother in law, who didn't, you know, I wasn't her favorite fan, <laughs> you know, asked me to go on a, an outing. Her boss was having an outing at a country club, right around the corner. But you know, coming from like ten dollars a week and buying a six pack and washing my clothes and being broke, I was like, you know, I really I can't afford a country club. I feel guilty. She's like, you know, go get a lunch. You know, have fun. You know, and I'm playing that round. I start daydreaming. You know, I say, you know, it'd be really great if I could join a country club. Make a long story short, they have an executive special. Go home, ask my wife to let me, you know, you know, give me five grand, let me join. I start this country club, playing in my fourth round, telling my story how I'm going to create this, you know, empire where you can invest, have first right of refusal. This guy says, hey, here's a hundred grand. Let's get started. Could not believe it. By the end of that round, I had it all formulated in my head through my taxation filtration system. Now I was going to quit my $175,000 job and lift off 60 grand a year. Well, that didn't go too well with my wife. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we, we made it work. You know, fortunately, uh, about three months later, I took that 100 grand he gave me. I did quit my job. I locked up a 12 acre site for $25,000 refundable. This dentist told me, you know, I have this C C-O-N. He said, I said, what's that? He said, it's a certificate in need. I was like, 
okay, what is that? He goes, well, you could build an assisted living facility. I was like, really? How many beds? He says 100, 113. I'm like, I'll take it. I'm going to figure it out. Had no idea what it was. S literally write up a letter of intent on a piece of paper. And I proceed over the next, it's probably 18 months because I got approval. And in the first six months, I developed a 113 bed assisted living. It was a $17 million project. You then none of my own money, other people's money and other people's experience. Now I had a lot of sweat equity. I built that project myself. Um, we finished it in 13 months and it was just an extraordinary story, story on how I raised the money in tranches and was at the finish line with an approval. And I just needed to raise $600,000 to close with the New Jersey EDA. And one of my contractor buddies from the city uh, wrote me a check for 600 grand and I was in business. I made a million dollars on that. I, I paid, started paying myself $30,000 a month in fees, which was the beauty of going into development. And, and the reason I, pointed out, um, it was, uh, you know, about the fixing and flipping, I learned that you could actually descend upon the ascension path in real estate and be extremely successful versus, you know, ascending with fixing and flipping and kind of working yourself up the ladder. And that's been my like extraordinary experience, you know, and I eventually created the formula so that I could start showing people what I've been doing. Well, you must have really played a crappy round of golf trying to formulate all that stuff in your head. How, how, do, you, how do you concentrate on that? I mean, I could see, I could be like, okay, dude, I'm done. I, that, that's awesome. Describe with me what, what, what that means, descend upon the ascension path. Can you break that down for me? Yeah. You know, in 2008, when Lehman Brothers crashed, I lost $330 million in one day. And I was looking at which building I should jump off of. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, it was an awkward time because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I, I, being a magician since I was 12 years old, I started doing magic. I was doing trade show magic. And, uh, you know, it, it took me about a year after trying to buy, uh, what was it, uh, Stewart's Root Beer and doing something in car simonizing that I got back into real estate. Where And it was simply because I had listened to uh, Robert Green talk about mastery and 10,000 hours and being a magician. There were these two card magicians that had over 10,000 hours, the Buck brothers that could do stuff with cars that I had never seen in my life. And in this like literally state of depression, I was like, you know, how many hours did I put in real estate? And I sit down there, I start calculating and the damn thing came up to 108,000 hours. And I was like, you know, I, I, got, I have to stay in this. So with this magician in me, I go to this event. It was uh, the winner's circle with all these like real estate gurus. Now the market just crashes. And I'm like, man, these guys are like doom and gloom. I'm doom and gloom. But meanwhile, I get up on stage and I performed magic in front of people. I literally did a magic trick to open the show. And I brought some spirit into the room, but I realized it was a business. But from that is when I created real estate development made simple. And, I, and it was true of magic friend, Joel Bauer. You probably know Joel Bauer. He's like, you know, Ken, I could teach you how to do trade show magic. And I was doing trade show magic. But let me show you what I really do. I'm a platform closer. So I watched him close, you know, I don't know, 40 people at 12 grand. I was like, wow, I just guy just made 500,000 doing informational marketing. So I decided to create a course to help others. But after creating real estate development made simple, I realized it was a business and everybody went away from real estate development because 500 cranes freeze in the city standing there like statues. Meanwhile, everybody starts going to foreclosures and short sales. I'm like, wow, this is interesting. This informational marketing business cycles like real estate. So with all this stuff and realizing, wow, the thing, you know, market just crashed. I, I don't know what to do. You know, I met a guy and he's like, you know, your program is like in the stratosphere. You need to, you know, you need to break it into four and you need to hit, you need to hit the spectrum. You need to show people how to do it. And I was in such a bad space. I kind of put that on the back burner. Fast forward to today, you know, about two years ago when I wrote the book, I said, you know what? That guy was right. I want to create the entire spectrum in real estate so that they can use my skill sets and ascend upon the dissension path at the top with top down thinking and then utilize that across the entire ascension path to do anything in real estate. So I started to apply what I knew, like, say, Wall Street on like literally wholesale where people said, oh, you don't need money to wholesale. I'm like, listen. You're going to get into wholesaling and then you're going to want to fix and flip and then you're going to get, you know, the bug and you're eventually going to need money. So I know, you, I know there's people that do hundreds of wholesale, but they just do wholesaling. But if you're going to go down my path, you're going to want to 
you're going to want to ascend and you're going to want to do it based on my theory from descending on it, you know, so mm -hmm. that you can capitalize on everything. And that's where the whole thing went about. So that's when I said, okay, I'm going to create real estate master university that would start with the beginner and then have the real estate development made simple and have that full spectrum covered. So when someone meets Ken Van Lu, like, I don't know everything, but you know, my partner's Dolph DeRoos. So like if someone wants to get into like buying acquisitions and digging really down on that, on the Ascension path, I bring in my partner Dolph. Like I'll show you how to build it. I buy multifamily, but he's a little better than me in that. I'm a little better than him in, in development. And through that, I create the spectrum so everybody can benefit. So if someone comes in and they're looking at wholesaling, you know what? I put them with that wholesaling team or if someone wants to do fixing and flipping, they go with my fixing and flipping because I can't do everything. And I don't really want to know about that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. I, I, um, I'm trying to just continuously bring every person I meet to their greatness and have some fun while I'm doing it. So Ken, let's go back to 2008. You know, picture this: you're sitting on top of one of your skyscrapers, wanting to jump off, but you don't jump off. And you go back to that point in time. What did you learn? What are the big learning steps? From because it's going to cycle back. We're probably in that cycle right now. What did you learn from 2008 that you can apply now going forward? You know, it's you know the first thing that comes to mind, and I, and I have to say it. You know, even though it's probably you know it's it's spoken about all the time, or you, you hear about it. But at that moment, you know, I was just in, you know, I was in within six inches here. I was just totally in my head. And, and the, the viciousness of the stories that were created in my head, literally at one point was like, okay, you caused the market to crash. Like you just lost your investors money. And, you know, it, it was a rabbit hole that I went into, you know, and I guess what I really learned was that, you know, I have the ability to create any story and, and none of it was true. And, and that, and I let that affect me for a long time. So the two things I learned is that, you know, as we circle rabbit holes or we, you know, we feel ourselves getting in our head, I, you know, may sound a little hokey, but I force myself into my heart. You know, I look at, um, you, you know, that, you know, a thought is just a thought. It's, it's absolutely not true. And it's very simple because, you know, something happens and then we create a story and then you go back to what happens and what happens changes. And then you go back to more story. And the next thing you know, you're in this like vicious cycle of just telling the story and you're not talking about what happened. So, you know, I, I did, you know, I, I worked on my head a lot because my head was up my ass, you know, you know, hate to express it that way. Don't worry. I'm used to it. My head's up my ass often also. So yeah, it's, well, it's, that's, a, that's a New Yorker <laughs> term. Like I remember Larry McGo uh, yeah, Eric McGovern, Ken, get your head out of your ass. Like this, I'm building this uh, 30 stories high, high rise for uh, Giuliani, you know? <laughs> so uh, it was fun, but uh, so yeah, 2008 was interesting. And that was the second time it happened. Um, in 2001, you, you're probably familiar. I, uh, well, after doing the assisted living, I bought Bay street landing, uh, down in Staten Island. And I was with Tony Robbins, uh, for life mastery in 2001. You, you may have seen some of his videos mm -hmm. when the towers collapsed. And that day I lost a half a million dollars. So the second go around to go into the rabbit hole, you know, again, can happen even when you've experienced it before, you know, and once again, you know, you just, you just strengthen that mind, strengthen that mind. So it's crazy. I'm just reading Stephen Covey's book and the great Stephen Covey says, people see the world as they are, not as it is. So if you're coming from that fixed mindset perspective of, you know, it's my fault, I've lost all these, how are you going to get, how are you going to dig yourself out of there? So you said you went into your heart, but you had the skill set also, correct? I mean, did you, did you find proximity? Did you go around other partners? Cause I mean, I'm, you know, right, right across the screen there, I have an amazing partner. So when I go down that rabbit hole, I have either my wife, I have the Jake and Gino community. I have my partner, Jake there. And that really, I lever that. And as I've gotten older, uh, Tony, uh, Stephen Covey talks about it. You go from dependence to independence to interdependence, which is, which for me, I didn't even realize until a few weeks ago, I'm reading about it. I am an interdependent person right now. I rely on others. I need the, we, it's not just about I anymore. It's about our Jake and Gino community. It's about Jake. It's about, you know, our team here about all the employees. It's a we community. What did you do to, uh, to get out of that? Yeah. You know, it, you hit the nail on the head and thank you for reminding me. But, you know, I, I hired a coach. You know, I was, a, I was an all-state football player in high school. I played college ball. <clears throat> and, you know, some people look at coaching as a negative connotation. But <clears throat> my football coach 
led me to be an all-state football player. He, he, he's been with me my whole life. I've been on the gridiron and I hired coaches. I, there was a point I had nine coaches and I coached in every area of my life. And I surrounded mm-hmm. myself with mentors and I, you know, I looked at, you know, success left clues. And I really learned a lot about, you know, process mastery in the sense that you do have to mirror and model right? Mm-hmm. And you have to measure and you have to vertically innovate into those relationships. Like I knew everybody, but I, I would say I kind of horizontally innovated and kept building outward. And then I started to vertically innovate, you know, lose more ego, not be afraid to surround myself with people better than me, eat a little crow, you know, get rid of some of that New York slick, as you mm-hmm. know, you know, and, um, and just create a new being, you know, I, 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 I created a new being, you know, around what you said before, you know, and how sometimes you become who it occurs and not who you really are. And, you know, we get stuck on the identity related to what we do. You know, I was Mm -hmm. skyscraper builder that all of a sudden stopped building skyscrapers. And what was I going to do? And Stewart's root beer and hamburgers wasn't doing it for me, you know? (laughs) Yeah. What's amazing though, like I said, everyone really needs to read the seven habits of highly effective people because what you're talking about right now is you are in the personality ethic. You are all about me, flashy, you know, guy in New York city building skyscrapers until you crashed and burned and rebuilt yourself and worked on your character, worked on the principles, worked on the ethic. That's you. I would call that a rebirth, right? And and that's where the growth comes from. And you looked at those problems in 08 and you work through those problems and all of a sudden that's why people who are you know tend to be older are the ones who become successful because when you're young you don't really think about these things you're just worrying about the flashy pan you're you know you're all you know where they say all hat and no 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 cow cattle whatever that, that term is right and and working on yourself what you did is you really shed your old identity and you took on your new identity which is yeah. really working on this on the on the on the character itself do you want to expand on that a little bit um yeah, no question. So, yeah, there was a there was a serious reinvention, you know, in myself. And, you know, it was about, should I say, being do have, you know, but I, yes. I put it in reverse. And what I what I did at that point and Jake, I love how you, you uh, Jake and uh, Gino, I love how you're bringing the subject up. You know, at that point, I was like being do have and I, I was like, OK, I, let me reverse this. And I said, you know, what do I have? Right. And I had a lot of upset, you know, and I had a lot of anxiety and, and, and I was like, okay, you know, you know, I don't want to have this, you know? And I said, well, why do I have it? You know? And I started to say, well, I must be doing something to have these feelings. Mm -hmm. And I started to break down what I was doing. And uh, what I was doing is in some cases, you know, I wasn't taking certain actions. Some cases I wasn't being responsible And, you know, I, and I started to look at, you know, the result of that and it just wasn't working. And I realized it was in my true being, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and that's when I, I realized that my being was more about ego. It wasn't about, um, I, I, I was always a giver. My dad said, you know, you you were eight years old and you're buying people, you know, ice cream at the ice cream truck when you had $2, you know, you always were giving, you know, and I, I found that, in, in that tough time, you know, I, w- I was, I guess I called myself a supplier saboteur as my, do- as my friend, Dr. Agrio says, where I give, give, give until I just drain myself beyond, you know, I can't mm-hmm. help myself at that point. So I just took a, a, a new being where, you know, I made it a lot bigger than myself. I realized that helping others and, you know, was, was eventually going to, you know, lift me up. And I, I really took a, a totally different approach on the, on the psychology aspect. Cause like you said, and like I mentioned before, having 108,000 hours where you do something subconsciously conscious, you know, um, or literally I could build a skyscraper in my sleep, that wasn't going to solve the problem. Mm-hmm. You know, the mm-hmm. skill sets were there, but the missing was was really the uh, the, the reinvention of the being, right? Mm-hmm. And not getting connected to an identity, mm-hmm. right? Because that that'll that'll put you in a rabbit hole. If you're stuck to an identity, you know, and you then all of a sudden retire, you're not going to enjoy retirement. Mm -hmm. Yep. So 
you mentioned that we do have, and that is from, I read it in Garrett Gunderson's book, Killing Sacred Cows. And to me, yeah. that was an amazing book. Everyone should read that one also, because Garrett talks about the abundance mindset and the scarcity mindset and the fixed mindset and the growth mindset are all intertwined in that. But when you're living a life of abundance, you don't really worry about these things. Everything, the pie is not finite. The pie is infinite. You can continue to grow. And there's not just one skyscraper. You can make multiple skyscrapers. So forgive me, Ken, for going into the personal aspect of your life. I really want to dive deep because you're so successful and people just see Ken, the, you know, the successful dude out there. And they really got to know it's a struggle. It's a personal struggle every day. It's about personal growth and about personal development. And you, you can do all the mechanical doing cap rates and cash on cash returns. We know that you have over a hundred thousand hours, but that's not what ultimately brings you success. What brings you success is working on your personal development, working on your personal growth. So I just wanted to share that. Quote, what I want to ask you is let's go back because I'm sure you hear this a lot. Well, you did it 30 years ago. New York City is a different place now. What do you say to people who say that? Because I'm sure everyone's saying that to you right now. Well, back then you didn't have unions. You didn't, have, you know, things were cheaper. What do you say to them to counter that? Yeah, you know, New York is a unique place. You know, New York's struggling right now. There's no question about it. You know, I'm, I'm struggling in my mind on how to disrupt and how to do things in New York City. But mm -hmm. from my experience growing up here, you know, 59 years now, you know, New York is is the heart of, of the nation, you know, mm -hmm. and it's going to come back. And, you know, as we saw, you know, which, you know, I get choked up when I say this because I lost my best friend, but I never, ever thought that the city would come back after the collapse, you mm -hmm. know, and it did, you know, and it was, you know, the toughest time of our lives back then. You, and you know it because you were from New York. No one really knew how it was until you were there, you know, mm -hmm. and um, fortunately, I, you know, Fortunately, things worked out and uh, we, we just turned it positive. But, you know, I, I just tell people you have to you have to stay positive. You know, it's so easy to get negative right now. And, and this is exactly what we were talking about. Now is a time where people are just naturally being negative. And, you know, I think there's a lot of positive going on right mm -hmm. now. Just how you view it. There's tremendous opportunities in real estate. There's, you know, you know, people have the ability to, to create more time in their life, more magic you know, because they get to have more time with their family. So there's a lot of advantages. I've become closer to my children over the last year. You know, it's a little bit different approach. I've learned how to reach more people through the internet and some mm -hmm. of the stuff we're doing with Unblinded Mastery. And you, you mentioned something before, because I took my, I took what we're talking about today to a whole new level where people like, okay, we want to do self-improvement, but there's something out there that I learned. It's called Unblinded Mastery. And my, one of my partners, Sean Callagy, he's a blind man. He has a 125 man law firm. He has two of the top 100 jury verdicts in the country. And he built this firm and he's, he's, he's teaching unblinded mastery. He's good friends with Tony Robbins. He's a lion plat. He told his story on stage and 11.7 million of platinum partners rushed to the stage. Excuse that phone. But, um, you know, the, the point is, is that when you're, when you're working on yourself, excuse that guys, it'll go off in a minute. Um, you know, when you're working on it, uh, yourself, there, there's three components. So I look at it, there's, there's a self mastery, there's an influence mastery, and there's a process mastery. And it was a whole new level of self development that I found. And, you know, process mastery was a little bit about what I was telling you related to mirror and modeling and measuring and vertically innovating. And, and, and then the influence mastery is the, you know, the indispensable elements that reduce all types of friction in any single conversation. And then self mastery is more along the lines of self development. But when I realized that there were more components in bringing ourselves to our greatness, that's discovered by our blind spots. When we realize we are all blind and just mm -hmm. starting to see it's when you have massive, massive breakthroughs in your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just love to share that because, you know, for someone, you know, at my age to be able to say we're all blind and just starting to see and to be able to be just like a little kid again, you know, learning and learning. I learned from you. We're learning together. It's just it's a whole new life. You know, it just mm -hmm. brings a whole new light to life. <clears throat> I love that. Last question uh, before we go to the short answers. We're we're a real estate show, and I know you've been massively successful with raising capital. Do you have any tips for the listeners out there on you know even your first deal till now? What should people be doing to really be raising capital? Yeah, you know, 
once again, I, ha I have a, a, a different approach, but you always hear in real estate, location, location, location. Mm -hmm. I'm all about presentation, presentation, presentation. When I did my first residential deal, I gave him a little investment memorandum that looked like a, like a Wall Street investment. And it was mm -hmm. for... <clears throat> It was for a 90,000 burnt out house and money just gravitated to that. Until this day, I do little things called hot sheets, which, you know, less is better, but followed with a little deck. And instead of giving, you know, some of my business card, I give them a one sheet and I've changed my whole presentation different than anybody else. And what it did was it enabled profitable projects to gravitate to me through mm -hmm building deep relationships and some of the stuff that we talked about today, because when you're working on that self mastery and influence mastery and process mastery, the friction that's eliminated the connections, like you're not even asking people to give you deals. They're, they just give them to you. You don't have to ask. And I found some, something that I believe, you know, that everybody can benefit. And it's, it's really that thought process of unblinded mastery and realizing you know, that's where life begins when we, when we see what we can't see, you know, mm -hmm. I love that. Let me just uh, follow that up with three questions that Ken is always probably answering is, can I help you? Obviously probably Ken is probably helping everybody that is raising capital. Do you trust me? So Ken's talking about those deep relationships with Stephen Covey talks about the character ethic. If you trust Ken, you will give him money to invest in a deal. And do you know me? And that comes from the, those building those deep relationships. Yeah. So if you can answer those three questions while you're raising capital to a yes, and you have built that trusting relationship, money is going to gravitate towards you like you would never even imagine. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you, it, you know, till this day, just, you know, in the last few months, I've raised $5 million and it's, it's getting pretty easy now, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, I've, and don't get me wrong, you know, overnight success took a few years, <laughs> but the good news mm -hmm. is, you know, I'm now up to 125,000 hours in what I do and I get the, I did the heavy lifting and I get to help people. So, mm -hmm. you know, the good news is, uh, you know, I, you know, I don't want anybody to go out and work like I did, you know, from <laughs> five in the morning to midnight for, for 25 years. But, you know, the good news is God gave me that gift. So now I get to pay it forward. That was my favorite movie, pay it forward. So mm -hmm. love that. All right, guys, let's take a quick time out to hear from our sponsor. Are you looking for ways to improve your life? Here at Jake and Gino, our mission is to empower students through financial education and the vehicle of multifamily investing. Yes, Jake. We agree that a person with financial intelligence can change the world for the better. We've created our proprietary three-step framework, buy right, manage right, and finance right, that we teach to our community. This framework, along with education, our one-on-one -on -one mentorship, on-site boot camps, and the amazing community has propelled our students to massive success. We've all been there. We've had so many students that have been able to shift their mindset, overcome limiting beliefs, and set a clear path to achieve their goals. Whether you're currently fixing and flipping, wholesaling, or buying single-family rentals, and you know that multifamily investing is the right vehicle for you, I encourage you to visit jakeandgino.com forward slash apply to schedule your complimentary consultation with our team. And I want to let you know, this isn't a high pressure sales call. It's really just a discovery call to get to know each other better and see if we're a good fit for working together. And if for any reason we're not a good fit, our team has tons of resources we will share with you to help you along your journey. If you're ready to stop spinning your wheels, go to jakeandgino.com forward slash apply and schedule your call now. All right, we are back. I'm uh, going to go a little bit on the personal growth side of things. Uh, Ken, what is your best habit for success? Great question. You know, I, you know, it's it has to be the morning ritual. You know, I um, you know, I start um, you know, with some intake of hot water. I'm live, guys. And um, you know, I, I do a morning ritual where I, I, I usually move for about 50 minutes. I then meditate, then I take a cold shower, then I fuel my body. And that usually sets my, my start off every day. And, you know, just um, helping others is a big habit every day. I, I you know, it's, it's one good deed daily for me. Mm -hmm. Setting the tone with repetition. Love that. Uh, what about a tip for someone scaling their real estate business? Yeah, you know, um, along the lines of what I said, you know, don't necessarily sit at the bottom of this mountain and, and say there like, wow, how am I going to get up there? You know, find a mentor, you know, and, and, and 
take into consideration what I said and believe, because if you believe you can descend upon the ascension path and make yourself massively confused because then you're going to you know, learn many things and make yourself extremely frustrated because then you're going to have breakthroughs, you will succeed. What about a, uh, the book that probably was the most influential on your development? Hmm. You, you know, I'd have to say Robert Allen's No Money Down because, you know, when I, that, it came out just about when I went to college. My father, you know, gave me $10 um, a week. And I, I, you know, I, I was, you know, hustling, selling t-shirts to make extra money. And, you know, I read that book and, and I was, you know, it was saying I bought a house and I remember hearing him going into a town and <clears throat> within two days he had a property and I'm like, I can't even afford a car. Like, you know, how could this happen? But you know, when I read that, it planted a seed where, you know, 20 years later, I built a $17 million project with no money. And I would have to say that was the most influential book that, that I ever read because it, it, I said, can this really happen? And when you ask yourself questions, can it really happen? It can. You, you really can do it. So it comes down to behaviors. Your behaviors are belief driven. If you can believe you can do it. And listen, we wrote a book. It's called Creative Cash, creativeapartmentdeals.com. Go check it out. It's the same thing. Becoming creative. If you can believe Robert Allen's book, you can do that then you can do it. If you're going to say it's all hogwash, you can't do it, then guess what? Your, your behaviors are not going to go aligned towards that. So if you can believe it, and trust me, it's it's doable. Jake and I have done a 281 unit, $11 million, no money down deal. Now the deal's worth over, over 20 million bucks. We refied it three times. So if you can believe that and you read it and you have an open mind, like what I just said before, uh, talking about people see the world as they are, not as it is. If you're seeing it as, you know, Ken can do it, Jake and Gino can do it, but I can't, guess what? That's what's going to happen. You're not going to be able to do it. So believe in yourself, right? Stinking thinking. If you have that stinking thinking, you're not going to be able to do it. Trust me. If Ken and the drug rep and the pizza guy can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> exactly. Hey, can we get it? Can we get a magic uh, trick for the folks on YouTube or is that too much to ask? Um, if you let me grab a coin, I can. Sure. <laughs> It'd be great. We'll, we'll take, we'll take 30 seconds. Get that coin. We want to see some, we want to see some magic here. Literally. <laughs> So thank God Ken's a real estate investor. He doesn't make his investors' money magically disappear. Right? <laughs> that, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> oh man, the anticipation. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh let's see if I can um let's see. This is I... the first ever, folks. Uh, Jake and Gino first. We've never had, you know, besides Gino just being himself, we've never had uh, magic on the shows until now. So. <laughs> yeah. Stens, you just you bring the magic, my friend. <laughs> I'm trying to see how, uh, so you might not be able to see my face here, but let me see what Can't I see your do. face. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm going to, I just want to see if I, so I'm going to reach into the air and I'm going to just take a, a little, can you see with the light here? I'm going to reach into the air and just take a, a little piece of dust. It's hard. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to just sprinkle that dust in my hand and just give it a little squeeze. And you can actually see it. Changing <laughs> the silver. Now, if you take the silver, you can actually take it and just, make it vanish back into the dust skin. Now you have to take another piece of dust, squeeze it, and then you can bring it back into the coin. <laughs> now the best you know, had the silver. Coin is that you can see you can take the coin. Now watch carefully, because now if you have the dust here, but if you give it a little blow, it'll actually vanish. Now it's not over here, because it's actually over here. Now the best part here is just watch carefully, because if you take this, you can actually take the coin and actually push it right through your leg. Ow, that hurt. That's part here. <laughs> now watch here, because if you can actually change the coin into the best part. But that's how you grow your money. <laughs> that's how you grow the money. Very appropriate. Well done, sir. I love that. Love that. Uh, that is awesome. You know what? I was just telling Jake, thank God you don't let your investor's money disappear like that, right? So that's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it ends up growing. So um, what is the, uh, the best way for folks to get a hold of you? Yeah, the easiest way, go to, you know, KenVanLu.com. You know, there's a discover button there. You can, you can get to a strategy session if you, if you want to chat. That's, that's the easiest way. I'm, I'm not hard to get in touch with. All right, G-Dad, take us home here. Mr. Stenziano, this would take like 30 minutes to recap Ken's life. So I'm going to try to do it in like 30 seconds. Go back to when Ken was in college. He's on the six-year plan. He's a civil engineer. He said he wasn't a good student. I don't, I don't believe that. I think he's got the intellect to outshine Jake and Gino any day of the week to build a massive empire, 1,500 units, 3 million square feet. But in 2008, the great crash comes, and all of a sudden, 
Ken's like, you know what? I might be departing this earth, but you know, he sits up there and he says to himself, I'm in my head. I've got to do something. I've got this massive amount of experience, thousands and thousands of hours. I love the magic. Magic is a passion, but I need to get back into real estate, gets back into real estate. So it's working on the personal development meets mentors and everybody you either seek to serve or you pay to play. And Ken pay it to play, which is all about investing in your education, not spending your education and having nine and 10 coaches working at one time is going to hold you accountable. There's no excuses because you're locked in and you're investing in yourself and going from the personality ethic to the character ethic, building himself up, not worrying about the egos. Ray Dalio says, let's shed that egos in those blind spots. And as you start growing and as you become a leader, you start believing in yourself and you start trusting others going from the, the independent to the independent to the interdependent, which is all about we and you create, a, create an, an amazing life of abundance, even throughout this pandemic, working on yourself and being out there and trying to help others. That's what the essence of life is. And that's why I think Ken loves real estate, because it's all about relationships, building those relationships and helping out investors from that little boy right, have two bucks in his pocket, given, you know, out there and buying kids ice cream till now to where he's out there writing books and he's helping others from the ascension to the ascension. That's an amazing story and an amazing life. Thank you so much, buddy. That was bring, an awesome summary. Bring the pain. So, all right, guys, thank you so much. Ken, Gino, have a fantastic rest of the day and thank you all for your time. Thanks, thank Ken. You. Appreciate it.